This is the Living Numbers Podcast, and I am your host, Tony Rambles. And I've got the distinct pleasure of having a great friend of mine. We've been friends for how long? Ooh, a long time. <laughs> right? When did we get to the church? Uh, maybe like eight or nine years ago, something like yeah, that. it's been a minute. Been so... I've got the pride of Booker T. Washington High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma here. Go Hornets. (laughs) A licensed speech pathologist stepping into her own after many years of hard work. Hard work, God first, or is that backwards? God first, hard work. Okay, excuse me. (laughs) Nominated by me as most likely to fight someone for her friend. (laughs) Also known as Mama Face. My friend, Shamia. Shamia, say hi to the people. Hey, guys. (laughs) Not fight somebody. (laughs) Nominated by me. So, you know, there was no poll or anything taken on that. I think you would make it to pretty high up there on the list. That's a good thing, though. Uh, Somewhat. Yeah. Somebody has to punch people. But, you know, I go to bat for my friends. There we go. There we go. I'll take that. Okay, so... We are not going to waste any time, and we're going to jump into our our first number here. Uh So with this being your first time, (laughs) so I introduce every topic with a number. Okay. And so the number can be arbitrary. It doesn't really matter what the number is. So parenting is our first one. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Since you've got the great Breon White. Yes. Now, uh, D1 scholarship athlete. Boomer Sooner. Boomer Sooner, right? So I'll be rooting for Oklahoma after Michigan. Like, so Michigan's, okay. you know. <laughs> so but Oklahoma's OU, you know, I'm. Number two. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm rocking with OU because now I got family there. So, you know, that's got to trump the rest of the other teams I root for. Who cares about them, right? Yes, I would agree. So our number here is going to be three. Okay. Because you have three children. Yes, I do have three kids. (laughs) So, well, like, what has been your favorite part of parenting? That's we'll start there. I think that's easy. Uh, My favorite part has just been watching them grow into their personalities. Mm -hmm. Um, They're all completely different. Bree is more like reserved. She can be silly. Yeah, but Deuce is kind of like he's not an introvert, Mm -hmm. but. He kind of is. Like, he loves his video games. So yes. When we're at home, I only see Deuce when it's time to, like, eat, go to the bathroom, or eat again. <laughs> like, or he, or if he wants V-Bucks. Um, so, Wait, V-Bucks? Yeah, for uh, Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, it's V-Bucks. I am not <laughs> well-versed in the Fortnite lingo. Yeah, so they he uses those to buy like skins, I think. Okay, it's yeah. I got but anyway, it. so those are the only times that I see Deuce. Bryson, on Bryson. the other hand, yeah, is like a complete character. Yes. I just I don't I mean, he's like a combination of me and Bruno, mm. honestly. And you never know what he's gonna say or what he's gonna do. So that has been like the best part, I would think. It's just watching them grow up and you know, kind of come into their own. So. Yeah, and I think just because obviously I've been here for a good chunk of it, mm-hmm. and just man, Bryson is <laughs> <laughs> Bryson is the funniest. Yes, and he's yes. what like three? No, is Bryson three? Bryson is five. I'm Tony. not good with little kid <laughs> ages. I'm really not. I judge everything based on what grade are you in. Oh no, yeah, <laughs> Bryson is five. He'll be six. And six? Oh my god! He'll be six in September. That is so crazy. Like, I feel like I just had him. But anyway, that's a totally different story. No, but, that's a great story. Go for it. No, but I'm just saying, like, the years have really passed. Yeah. Like, yeah, they've really gone by. But yeah, Bryson. Doesn't he have an IG? He has an IG, but we haven't really updated it. Uh huh. Um, Brian takes most of his videos so I have to like get them from her she's like give me my credit I'm like 
chill. You gotta <laughs> like, tag her. I'll, well, now I can tag her because she finally has oh, an Instagram. Yeah. But I need to get back to posting his videos. But and he has a YouTube channel. But once again, right? We've just been so busy, consumed with Brian and work, and I'm like, I haven't uploaded anything. Uh-huh. But so, so talk about that process because as a a girls basketball coach myself, it is a lot of work on both the kids and the parents when you start talking about mm-hmm. trying to get a scholarship. And so what comes with that is AU or travel teams, club teams, mm-hmm. depending on you know what sport you play, it may be classified differently. It may have a different name, but it's right. all kind of the same the stuff. Same. Mm-hmm. So just talk about that like as a parent, from the parent side of AAU and just trying to get, try, raising a D1 athlete. So I will say that um, my husband, Bruno, like really shout played out to a Bruno. huge part. Yeah, shout, shout out to Bruno. Um, he played a huge part um, in getting Brian to where she is. He played basketball mm-hmm, um, yeah. in high school and college. Um, he had the opportunity to play overseas, but I got pregnant with Brian, so he was like, oh, let me stay, take right. care of my child. Um, but they, I mean, initially... He started out training Bree. Mm-hmm. First of all, Brian didn't even play sports right. she until played, uh, seventh grade. The violin. She played the violin and the cello <laughs> and the flutophone. <laughs> like, so wow. she went to a basketball camp in in New Orleans. Bruno was playing in this um, event with his um, old high school team. Hey, shout out! Hey, Bruno gets buckets. Yes. I've hooped with Bruno <laughs> many a time. So um, she went to like a little camp or something and that's when she decided like, hey, I think I want to play basketball. So of course that was like the biggest, greatest gift ever. Like, oh, my child wants to play sports. Mm -hmm. So um, we started her off uh, playing at the school. But of course it's like, you know, they teach you things at the school, but it's not enough. You know, Yeah, it's only so much because... Because you, you only have a certain kids, amount of time. You only got so much time. Yeah. Some people aren't really serious about playing basketball. Exactly. So. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're fine. So um, we got her involved in AAU. Mm-hmm. Um, so my Uncle Anthony. Shout out Uncle Anthony. Okay, no. Uncle Ant. <laughs> but um, he got back into coaching because Brian was ready to play. So he was her AAU coach, um, him and Coach Rob. Um so that was seventh and eighth grade. Um, and so just a lot of training. You know, we traveled a lot with AAU. It was a it was a, a great experience, you know. Yeah. Like we enjoy watching her play. Of course, you know, you could hear Bruno from on the other side oh, of the man. gym because he's just so loud. But then I kind of <laughs> picked up on that. I think I got like Yeah. I I traded spots with him. It it mm-hmm. definitely like this past, like her senior season. Mm-hmm. But, I, like, I, I didn't want her to have, like, too much stress. Yes. But um, luckily she had teachers um, that pushed her as well. So, right, I mean, right. she's well prepared for college. So Brian is also, and she got, I think, what was she in the fifth grade, I think, when she got here? When she when got, got here? To... I feel like I met her in the fifth grade. Probably, but I think we started. Because I think y'all got here a little bit before. I mean, you know sparkle forever yes i have <laughs> so i think i met brian in that area no i think she was like maybe fourth grade third fourth grade because deuce mm-hmm. was a baby when i started okay. coming to church so yeah but i mean that's still a long time it is and so to watch her grow she has always been like outgoing mm-hmm. and responsible like always <laughs> from the outside look at it okay y'all didn't no, see that face i got but no she's just, responsible <laughs> this is kind of more mature than the kids her age yeah and you know i had her when i was in college so you know she was around me and my friends yeah. you know not like a whole lot of kids until mm. you know we moved to houston but she is very mature for her age so my dad yeah. would say stuff like because he had us when he was in college. Mm-hmm. And so we were around him in college with more adults mm-hmm. than kids. And so he felt like that had an impact on 
our maturity for the most part, at least <laughs> most of us. So I think that does make a, a big difference because if you're around grownups, you kind of see what they do and you see mm-hmm. how they act. You're not watching like kids do kid things and yeah. fall out and maybe cry a little bit more and those kind of things. So like, yeah, I do, I do think that makes a big difference and I had never thought about it until just now when you yeah when you said that and I was the same way like my mom had me when she was in college and so you know I grew up with her Mm -hmm. and her friends and we had we had a conversation about this not too long ago but um it's like I kind of like I'm kind of glad yeah because I mean I feel like I matured a lot faster than some of my friends yeah and so I kind of like talked to Brianna I'm like look this is what I was doing at 16. I had a job, you know, and right. I know she can't work because she trains so much and then she goes to school, mm-hmm. but, um, just trying to teach her to be responsible. So like the conversations we've been having, you know, prior, you know, prior to today or just leading up right. to her going off to school, you know, okay, this is what you need to do. This, this, yeah. this, and this, and you know, but I think she'll be fine. Well, not think, I know she'll be fine. Yes. Um, yes. She has a really good head on her shoulders. And so, you know, even though we'll be all the way in Houston, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, she'll be good. She'll be good. What was your favorite part of college? Uh, <laughs> 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 Woo, all right. So my favorite part of college, I mean, of course, education that's what you're supposed to say yeah but um just meeting new people Mm -hmm. um hanging out with friends um of course dating that's when i met bruno like i went to college i was like i'm not talking to nobody i'm focusing on school oh and then like three months later i saw bruno i met bruno (laughs) so i was like Like, okay (laughs) i need to talk to him and so um but yeah just meeting new people hanging out with friends Mm -hmm. I will say, um, even when I started, like, my courses for speech, like, I was just so excited. Like, both of my aunts are speech pathologists, so I Mm -hmm. already knew a little bit about it. But just, you know, getting to that point, like, man, I'm here. I'm about to take these classes and things like that. And then, I mean, I had Brian, like, prior to going into my junior year. But, like, the the friends that I went to school with in my uh, speech department, like, they were, I will say they were like Bree's first village. Oh, okay. A yeah. part of Bree's first village. Cause I mean, if I didn't, like if Bruno was out of town, mm-hmm. like my professors would let me take her to class or bring her to class. Okay. Yeah. Or the secretary in the front office, she's like, I'll watch her while you're in class. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> or I had a friend, her name was Ramaya. She would like, leave her class, walk over to my building and oh, watch man. Brie in the lounge. Like, you know, then I had Sparkle. She would watch Brie. I mean, it was just so All many people. Trustworthy people. Yeah. Like, I just left my kid with anybody. Really? Else. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are really good people. <laughs> they were really good people. But just thinking about that, I'm like, that was nobody but God that yeah. got me through that. Because I'm like... 19 20 years old having a right. kid in college like what what am i about to do but yeah so i feel like god has always had me covered mm. in that with brian or just all of my kids but definitely you know starting out with brian because i was like um so let's figure out this yes. whole school thing all brand new and you didn't want to leave school oh you that wasn't to... an option my yeah. aunt sunday she was like if you and she's like you better not drop out of school i'm gonna kick your butt <laughs> and i was like whoa i'm not dropping out of school <laughs> Right, because, you know, when people tell these stories, you know, mm -hmm. about having kids and they make it sound like it's the end of your life, Mm -hmm. you know, as you know it. And I'm just like, wait, wait a second, because baby Carter on the way, you know, June 27th. (laughs) I'm like, there are so many other people and so many examples where Mm -hmm. people don't, quote unquote, put their lives on hold Mm -hmm. they just take their kids along for the ride Mm -hmm. right because you want to be an example to to your children and say well yeah you know things happen but you still have to continue to to strive for the things and the goals that you have for yourself and i will say like you know i was doing fine in college you know i kind of got a little distracted but Uh uh (laughs) i will say that Brie, like, like having Brie or getting, you know, getting pregnant, having Brie, like, helped me put things 
into perspective yeah like i'm like i got a whole kid i'm about to have like, like hey, i, I can't mess get around together. <laughs> like <laughs> i gotta i gotta do what i need you know what i have to do in school make these grades so i can get into grad yeah. school and you know so it really just gave me that extra right push, the extra bump so. my brother talked about that my brother keith shout mm-hmm. out to keith he did the logo for hey. the Living Numbers podcast, streaming everywhere you listen to podcasts. Follow me on <laughs> IG at underscore Tony Rambles underscore. Had to get that in there. Hey. And he was just like, man, when I had my, my first daughter, it just kind of took my, my motivation to another level. Mm-hmm. And so he has two daughters now, my two nieces, London and Journey. Shout out to y'all. Maybe one day in the future, y'all will be listening to this like, oh, <laughs> wow. Uncle Tony shouted me out in his episode uh, but they just talked about the motivation is so different once you have kids it mm-hmm. just really pushes you to try to be better my favorite part of college a lot like yours was just meeting people i'm an mm-hmm. extrovert i talk and i just like to meet people and hear people's stories and perspective and hang out and at that time drink because <laughs> i was i was 20 almost 21 when I went to college gotcha. so I didn't go right out right out of high school but in college I was just I had worked and mm-hmm. made money and I was like I just gotta find something for me like <laughs> I don't want to work in oil and gas anymore I don't want to work 7 12s so oh. I'm just like all right let's go to college because you know you got to go to college <laughs> I'm like I don't care what the degree is in I just need to get something I didn't really have that much figured out at that point, but I knew that's where I should go. And so I went to University of Houston, U of H, right down the street. Of course, that's where I met Kia in my my fall semester. But it was just getting out, meeting people. That's when I first started coaching. And just that social aspect is, I think, a lot of what kids miss Mm -hmm. sometimes, especially because it starts really... In school, like yep. from the very beginning, and then it kind of elevates as you go up in levels. So middle school, the social part, it goes to another level where you have to kind of pay attention more to what's right. going on around you and what people are saying and what people are doing. And then in high school, it's elevated even that much more. Exactly. And understanding how to connect and how to kind of you know build bridges with people and make good friendships right right so our our next our next topic self-care and that's so i think it's kind of weaved into all of these top well what we've talked about so far where you have a village you got people who are speaking life and you got people that are are your friends people that you trust right and that's part of self-care too is having these great people around you to really uh you know pick you up right and pour into you Mm-hmm. whenever you have those difficult moments so you shared uh something earlier oh i did <laughs> yeah 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 you shared something earlier about how you make these phone calls whenever you're going over the highway oh yes really tony i think that's perfect here <laughs> perfect all right y'all so, i'm yeah. peer pressuring my great friend into sharing this story with y'all Wow. Anyway, <laughs> so in Houston, they have like these, I don't know if you call them overpasses or yeah. I don't know, these bridges that connect you from like the Beltway mm-hmm. to 288 or the Beltway to 59. Well, maybe when Bryson, I was pregnant with Bryson, uh-huh. the connection from the Beltway to 59, that was really high. So I just start like kind of freaking out. Right. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm not gonna go this way. Like, I'll get off on is it Belfort, like the little yeah, I think so. road, and uh-huh. go and then get back on yeah, make that right or that left. <laughs> and so here recently, like, I have developed this fear of mm-hmm. driving on these bridges, and yeah. so I knew it was like really real. I was going to pick Brianna up from a hair appointment. It was late at night. It was like almost one o'clock in the morning. And I'm driving on it. First of all, I wasn't even supposed to get on it. Let's start there. <laughs> She's but, like, I've been trying to avoid this. Right. <laughs> but the exit was blocked off because of construction. Oh, yeah. 
And so I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm like, I turn my music up, I'm singing. I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. Uh, negative, you're no. not. And so I just started getting like hot and like just, I could just feel myself about to freak out. And mm -hmm. I'm like, and I couldn't call anybody. It was like almost one o'clock in the you morning. You could have called somebody. I probably should have called Bruno, but I think he was asleep too. But anyway, but in my mind, I was like, let me drive real slow. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> Maybe that'll be, you know, be fine. But now that I think, I was like, I should have just sped up. sped up. But I just have this fear of falling off these bridges. And so yesterday I had an episode, like going to my new job, uh -huh. I was fine. I was like, okay. And I was on the phone. So coming back home, I have to go on another one of those high overpasses <laughs> from I-10 to the Beltway. From highway to highway, y'all. Beltway, I-10, 59, these are all highways. Yeah, sorry. For reference. So I was on the phone with my mom. So I'm like, I'm I'm good. I'm listening to her talk. I'm like uh -huh. really focused on her words because I'm like, this will help like distract <laughs> me from the fact that I'm driving on this bridge. Well, I get off onto the Beltway from this bridge. I'm like, I'm good. Got off the phone with my mom. She was going into a meeting. But then, like, the weather was really crazy. It looked, like, dark and gloomy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh. It's so like then I could just movie. feel myself, like, getting hot. And I feel myself, like, starting to panic. So I called my sister, Savine. And I'm, like, trying to strike up a conversation. Right. Like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> like, where, like, where are you? And so I'm driving. And these people don't know that you're, like, no. freaking out right now. <laughs> But then I told her, I was like, I do not feel good. Like, uh -huh. I was like, I feel so weird. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And so that made it even worse because I'm yeah. like, am I about to die? Like, it was so bad. So I get off the Bellway. I'm like at the Bellway in like Bel Air. Mm -hmm. I think it's like the gas station and like Chick-fil-A and all that. Mm -hmm. And so oh, she's yeah. like, where are you? And I'm like trying to explain. So I get out of my car and I'm just like walking back and forth trying to get air. And I call Bruno on FaceTime. He's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, can you drive? And I was like, not right now. Not right now. So I'm like walking back and forth and like drinking my water. And I was okay, but I had never experienced that. And I right. was like, okay, first of all, <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> this ain't gonna work. But I think that was just, I think this past year has been mm -hmm. stressful. Mm -hmm. And then this last, like, even this semester. So I worked in the school district, mm -hmm. super stressful. You know, I work in special education. It's a lot of paperwork, a lot of oh deadlines. Oh my God. Don't remind me of all the paperwork. <laughs> all that stuff on top of Bree getting ready to leave for college. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people talk to me about it. And I'm like, hey, like, how you feeling? I was like, I'm good. But right, right. I know I'm going to be sad, yeah. you know. So I feel like not really just letting those feelings out mm -hmm. and they're just all you know just different things just and i haven't really just taken time for myself just right. because we've been busy so you know just going back to the self-care like i need to take some time even if it's just meditating like my best friend in atlanta her name is keisha and okay. she's a therapist Shout out to keisha. Hey. but uh <laughs> you know she sent me this meditation app and you know she's like right. oh just go through these and sometimes yeah. it's just like affirmations um, and I had used it before. I was like, oh, I forgot I had this app, but I would just play it as I laid in the bed or I might go mm -hmm. in my closet and sit on the floor, you know, turn the lights out and just listen to it um, just to kind of like gather myself or, you know, going and getting a pedicure, just something for right, yourself, right. like taking that time, especially as a mom um, and a wife. Like there's so many hats that I wear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I want to say maybe... Maybe four years ago, um, I had got into this thing. I'm like, okay, all I do is go to work, go right. to church, yes. go home, or basketball with Bree. Like, yes. that was my life, and I felt like I was losing myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> like, I don't like it at all, so I yeah. need to figure something out. So I told Bruno, I was like, I need to start, like, living life, like, doing yes. things that I used to do. Um, so I had this thing. I'm like, every year for my birthday, mm -hmm. like, I'm going to go on a trip. I don't care where it is, if it's just down the street, around the corner. I got to get out of here. So, like, that first year, I rented a house in Canyon Lake. So, spent some time by myself, 
gathering my thoughts, setting goals for the next year. So I don't do like the New Year's resolutions. No, I don't either. I set my goals like on my birthday. Ooh, okay. Because that's like the beginning of a new year for me. Um, I think the next year I went to New York with my best friend. So I wasn't by mm -hmm. myself, but I had never been to New York. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to experience that. So I found a cheap flight and I went for like three or four days. Go for it. And so, so every year I've done something for myself. Now this past year, no, because of COVID, COVID. you know, no traveling. But this year for December, I plan to travel somewhere. Out of here. So just, you know, making sure that I have that time so that I can recharge and I can be, you know, yes, that person for my family. But, you know, it's it starts important. with me. So it's important that in me and Kia, my wonderful wife for all my listeners out there, me and Kia have talked about that where, especially as a wife, where there comes a point, especially when you want to have children, where mm -hmm. you have to kind of devote yourself fully to mm -hmm. to that process because it takes a lot out of you. And then some people have to take off work for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so she's always, she's never wanted to feel like she was losing herself, like you were just describing. Yeah. Like, I don't want to feel that way. And so me, as her as her husband, even from day one, I've always wanted her to have something for herself. Right, right. Like, That's important. be involved in something. Do something that doesn't have anything to do with me. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have anything to do with, you know, your family, your mom, or whomever. Mm -hmm. Just find something that's you. Now, for me, it's easy. Because... Right basketball i love basketball <laughs> <Always> basketball <laughs> but that's just one thing and so a lot of people know that i like sports mm -hmm. but not everybody knows that i love to play uh i'm i love music and i had never really played an instrument growing mm -hmm. up or anything we weren't really exposed to that kind of thing growing up playing instruments mm -hmm. it was really just about sports football mostly but we will play basketball at the park and stuff, but mm -hmm. sports, sports, sports. And so, but I've always loved music. I would always be making sounds and mm -hmm. humming stuff. And, and so I eventually got to a point where I'm like, I'm going to learn how to play guitar. And it wasn't a thing that was like, I want to learn because I want to like be a superstar. Right, right. I want to learn because I love music. I like guitar. Especially, I love 80s rock. I mean, like... Interesting. I See? <laughs> I would have never known that. I do. I do. <laughs> and so, electric guitar is my favorite instrument. And so, that's the one I'm going to learn. Mm. It's hard. <laughs> it is... It sounds hard. <laughs> it is difficult. But I did it for me because that's something that I really enjoy. Even the difficult parts of it. Yeah. Because... It makes it worth yeah, it. Yeah, it does make it yeah. worth it. When you play that song, you're like, yes, I got it right. I got every note. <laughs> and I've become uh, oh, video games. And so I've heard where, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes people will get married mm -hmm. and someone will go, you're not going to be on that game all day. <laughs> <laughs> Are you that person, Tony? <laughs> well, and this is how great my wife is. This is how great Kia is. She'll go, if playing a video game is what makes you happy. Like, why would I take that from you? Right. Why would I yeah. bother you about that? Right. Now, as long as you're not calling in to work when the, when the right. new updates <laughs> drop, you know, as long as you're still doing what you need to do for our home mm -hmm. and for her, obviously, right. then why would I stop you from playing video games? Why would I stop you from wanting to go to the gym at whatever time? Because, you know, mm -hmm. fitness connection is 24 yeah, hours. Yeah. And so sometimes... I know for me, when I would go up there, super busy at like six, seven, eight o'clock. But if I go up there at like 10, it's, it's just enough people up there to get some good games in. And so sometimes I will hoop until like one o'clock. Now, late, but it is kind of late. I mean, but you're doing, so, as long as y'all have that, you know, agreement. That trust. Yeah, like, there's nothing wrong with that. She's like, I know where you are. Right. You know, I, I have no reason <laughs> not to trust you right exactly and so that's self-care in our relationship mm -hmm. you know because every relationship needs a little bit of self-care at least the important ones the right. ones that you care about right and that communication 
so important and like i said being able to do stuff for you so for me that's hooping that's playing guitar even reading i got back into reading you know that's on my list of to do yeah <laughs> so i just bought a new book and i'm like um uh, let me find some time to read this book but mm -hmm. the ultimate thing that i love to do for self-care yeah is making over furniture okay let's talk about it diy diy like so i would say okay wait before you go mm -hmm. how many diy projects have you done oh my gosh if you had to put a number on it i don't even know guesstimate i know it's more than 10. well it has to be more than 10. more than 20. Eh, close to 20. so like 17. I don't know. We'll roll with it. <laughs> okay. So the number for this segment is 17. That is our living number. The number is alive, right? That's where this comes from. She's done oh. about 17 projects. 17 is our number. Okay, go. So <laughs> I guess mm, maybe before Bryson, mm -hmm. like I would do a little stuff, not, not anything major. Uh -huh. It was more so like crafts or making these cool, like teacher appreciation gifts. Oh, yeah. Um, but then I kind of just like didn't have time to do that stuff. Mm. Like, especially after having Bryce, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I got three kids. <laughs> I ain't got time, you know, like working and church and just, you know, whatever. So mm -hmm. I kind of got away from it, but, um, and I would do a little something here or there, but not, not a lot, but I will say that COVID, even though COVID sucks, yeah, the good thing is that I was home mm -hmm. and able to do projects. So it just kind of like brought me back to that okay this is what i love to do yeah and so i initially just started doing stuff for myself so like i painted the game room upstairs i refinished the desk i painted like the boys room yeah you started going crazy i was like i did i redid the whole upstairs like we changed out light fixtures and mirrors and it was just a lot and so um, then I moved down downstairs. It's not done. <laughs> like I'm still working on downstairs. Uh, work in progress. But then I was able to, you know, like people like, Oh, can you do this for me? But I was like, Oh my gosh. Like I have, like, I felt like I would have some anxiety cause I'm like, Oh my, it has to be perfect. It has right, to be perfect. Right. Cause it's for somebody else. It's now your name is on else. it. Yeah. So my first project that I did for somebody else. And then I was afraid too. like, will it take away from like the love for it right. or like that self-care aspect mm -hmm. but the first project i did it was for a friend of mine her name is lisa and congratulations she got her doctorate okay lisa uh, <laughs> but she um she messaged me she's like i have this this armoire that it's been her family for a very very long time uh -huh. it's like probably her great 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 grandma's Dang. armoire yeah so she sent me pictures and I was like, okay. So I'm thinking like, oh, I just need to sand it down, paint mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. or whatever. So I went to go pick it up and I was like, oh, okay. And she was like, are you sure you can do it? I was like, I got it. I got it. So we got it loaded up in my car. I drove home. Bruno helped me get it in the house. And I just sat there and I looked at it and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? What are we going to do to this thing? <laughs> and I literally like prayed like, Lord. Okay. Yeah. Please guide my hands. <laughs> like, you know, because I literally had to like take it apart, like pieces apart, replace wood. So that was like my first like big project mm -hmm. where I had to do like all of that. And I was like, oh. now it took me, a, it took me a while. How long? Oh my gosh. It probably took me like two months. Okay. Yeah. Only yeah. because like when I started on it, it was Christmas break, but then oh, we went yeah. back to work. So I was like, I didn't have as much time. Right you know, as I had before, but I finally got it finished and delivered. She loved it. And so I've done things, a couple mm -hmm. of projects for other people. I have, I have some more to do for people. Oh man. Yeah. But I'm excited about it. So I am starting my company for yes. refinishing and repurposing furniture. So you guys are the first to hear that. Whoa, breaking news. <laughs> so I'm in the process of like, getting all that done yeah mapped out because i was sitting like here that. thinking like uh i haven't heard this is my first time hearing that <laughs> yeah so wow. i'm excited about that so you got an exclusive tony yes <laughs> so now you got to make sure you share this with everybody that you know so that yeah. so that they'll know and they yeah. can hear you talk they're like oh man shimmy i didn't know you were doing I'm all excited. that stuff 
And I kind of, um, it reminds me of my grandmother. I know it's kind of mm. like off topic. No, but no. She, Everything's <laughs> on topic here. She stayed like spray painting some furniture mm. or just something. Like when I, when I see gold spray paint, I yeah. think of my grandmother. And oh, I have wow. used so much gold spray paint. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like my favorite. But I was telling my mom that I was like, man, like I think of granny. Mm. Every time I start doing a project, so and I love my grandparents, they spoiled me. Um, oh man, my grandparents, we're not going to talk about them. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> but, um, so the company name, like, I combined like parts of my grandfather's name, my grandmother's name. Oh, this is gonna be good. Um, to put it together, but I'll post Are you gonna tell us? Stuff. No, oh man, <laughs> okay, that's fine. I so wait, it. where can people see your your projects? Um, so I am on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's SWC underscore wife. All right. Um, that's for Instagram, and then I try to post stuff. Mm -hmm. I just posted a project. Like, oh no, the other day, this past yeah, earlier this week. Yeah. But yeah, so but once my company stuff is up, then I'll share all that. And that's yeah. why I post my stuff. Do you have a favorite project that you've done? Hmm. Dang, that's hard. I like all of them. <laughs> I love you all equally. Um, favorite project. Okay, I guess it would be my first one. For oh, the, okay, yeah. During this COVID period, I refinished a desk, so mm -hmm. I painted it like this like it's not navy blue i don't know what kind of blue it is but it's really pretty okay um so i painted that and then i did the top part i used contact paper to refinish the top it was like this white and like gold print of course gold i like gold and i did spray paint the handles gold mm -hmm. shout out to my granny um but um it was really pretty and I was like, oh, and I redid a, like one of my old dining room chairs. I spray painted it gold. Yes. Come on with <laughs> like, the gold. I love the gold. But that was probably like my favorite project just because it was the first mm -hmm. that I really just like, okay, I'm about to just really do this. But I will say with Deuce's virtual school and he yeah. uses my desk, like uh -huh. my contact paper is done. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what have you been doing up here? But so I plan to take the contact paper mm -hmm. off and put like a wood top so yeah like a yeah, wood yeah. top to put on it so yeah that's on my list i have a lot of stuff on my list i see so but yeah so with that all about self-care i know you heard about the story with naomi osaka yes i did and <laughs> so she for the for my wonderful listeners out there let me fill you in so naomi osaka is a women's tennis player and she is amazing. Yes, very amazing. I think she's she's half black, half Japanese, right? Mm-hmm. And she pulled out of the well, she first first she came out and said, I'm not gonna do press conferences at the French Open. She cited mental health reasons. Right. And that was pretty much all she said. And so tennis got together and said, uh, well, you can't do that. And after the first first match, she didn't do press and she got fined fifteen grand. Ooh. Fifteen grand. That's our our number right here. And so after that, she just pulled out of the tournament completely. And then she put out a statement talking about how she's been struggling with depression and anxiety and just kind of being on a big stage has really gotten to her. You know, at this point, it's Time to take some time off, right. apparently. I'm kind of torn on this here because... Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Tony? So, mental health is obviously important. Right. We basically spent most of the podcast talking about it and the things that we do to protect our own mental right. health. Uh, but, you know, being a, a superstar global athlete and icon at this point mm -hmm. you know that that press comes with the territory yeah but okay first of all she's young she, she is like she's 19? 23 no she's 23 she's 23 oh i don't know she, but she's still young she is young so 
I feel like if she don't want to do the press, she shouldn't have to do the press, especially if mm-hmm. she's already said like mental health issues. Okay. Now it's not like she just said, I'm out. I don't want to talk to y'all. Like she has reasonings for that. And right. I feel like they didn't have to find her. You so, know what I'm saying? but you working in education, you know that this can be a slippery slope. Cause some people might say, I'm struggling with mental health and depression. You go, okay, yes, got it. And then other people, will use that as well even though they may have not may not have anything to back really know you don't really know and that's why you have have rules no but you have to take that person's word for it okay Mm -hmm. if they say and it's not what it is then that's something they gonna have to deal with but Mm -hmm. i feel like if a person is brave enough to come out and say hey i'm struggling Mm -hmm. like i'm struggling with anxiety depression like People need to listen and respect that. Agreed. Like, Agreed. And I'm grateful that the majority of her sponsors came out and stood yeah. behind her. Now, Louis Vuitton and there was another one. Like, they didn't give a comment. <laughs> I'm just right. like, really? <laughs> so you're not going to support her. But I feel like that was very brave of her. And so, mm-hmm. like, the post and everything I've seen, like, people have been, you know, standing with her. And I think that's, yes. like, really good because... It just kind of, you know, you don't know who would have helped. Yeah. Somebody else is struggling that's afraid to come out. And just because mm-hmm. they're a superstar, they're still a person. They're still a human. They still have feelings. They still go through their daily struggles uh-huh. just as we do. They might just have more money in the process. Okay. But... <laughs> but at what point? Because so you have tennis, which is it's a niche sport. Mm-hmm. It's not one of those sports like soccer. Mm-hmm. Where it's it's huge, it's global. It'll it can never fail. Uh, tennis is a sport where you have to market your stars, right? Because if you don't have a market and people don't want to watch you because we don't know who your stars are, you make mm-hmm. less money, and in concert with that, your players are going to make less money, right? Right. So it all kind of works together, but it's all based on people knowing who these stars are. And I would say if you are having issues and you need to take some time away, then take that time. But if you're on a tour, then, I mean, think about what what basketball would be if we never heard Bill Russell speak, because he was like, I'm not doing press. Mm -hmm. Or if we never heard Michael Jordan or LeBron now, or think about this, this is the last year or so that we've been in where you have all these people that's coming out talking Mm -hmm. about these issues because they have to do press. But you shouldn't have to do press. Well, how do you market your stars? If you're not stars? mentally... I mean, but she's already established. Like, people know who she right. is already. And so that's why they watch. Exactly. But she shouldn't have to do press, period. Uh, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> What do you do if, if I'm tennis and Roger, Fer- Roger un- Federer, Nadal, and Osaka, none of them want to do press? she's dealing with like she's dealing with depression she step just away from it. the tour then well that's what she did yeah she that's okay. okay but if you hear press no but sometimes the, if you're dealing with depression and anxiety and you're going to do press and all those people are coming to her mm-hmm. like they don't always have the nicest things to say you know what right. i'm saying like she knew that that would be detrimental to what she was already going through. First of all, she showed up to play. Like, that was uh-huh. big. Because most people that are struggling and with she depression. And she won. Right. They don't even want to get out of bed. They don't want to do anything. But she showed up. Yes. She won. So, she don't have to do press. Period. Sorry. So, like, all your stars say, I'm not doing press. I got mental health issues. But it's not all the stars. But and that's, like, the, that's the gate you open. No, it's not. If you allow gate. one person. That's like, if you allow one person to make up work. Where to call in work and just say, you know, no, I'm good. No. I can't come to work today. <laughs> then everybody going to start calling in. But I think this is different. You know what I'm saying? But then if people come out and say that they're struggling with depression, and maybe they really have been, yeah. and they didn't want to come out and say it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, seeing her, or, um, you know, come out and say, like, hey, I'm struggling with this. Right. It's kind of like. Oh man, I'm struggling with it too. We believe I you. I feel safe. Take some time away from tennis. Take some time away and say I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, just think about the people that have committed suicide. Like, right. if they would have felt comfortable mm-hmm. 
to say, I'm struggling with this. Do you think that it may have made a difference? Yeah. So they can't dictate. But that person wouldn't then. Not. Well, if somebody or well, not, nah, I'm not saying dictate. I'm not saying believe or don't believe. I'm saying if somebody tells me, hey, Mr. Franklin, I'm struggling with this. OK, take some time. Right. Take some time. But if you're in class, I expect you to do the work still. No. Yeah. <laughs> you got work. You can hit the road <laughs> if you need but you to. Can make a con you can make a decision. And this is just me. If I okay, have a go. child that's, that's struggling, like even like, okay, I'm a speech pathologist, right? Mm -hmm. So I have kids that go through stuff. And yes, we have to work on goals and things like that. Mm -hmm. But if I know and I see that they're struggling, I don't do all that. Like what I if... sit there and I talk to them like, hey, like, yeah. and actually like when I pull all of my kids for the groups, we do a check in. Yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. how are you doing today? How are you feeling? And sometimes based on the conversation, we might not even get to the lesson, right, but right. I want them to know that I'm there for them. I'm mm -hmm. not just your speech therapist or speech pathologist. Like, I care about you as a person. So, 100%. I mean, you have that power or that choice to do something different. But what if every day they come in and they say, ah, mental health issues? I mean... That's so that's what I'm saying. Like, but I don't think I mean, I've never dealt with that, but I don't think that people would just come in every day. I mean, well, you know, when people are trying to to get away with something, they'll grasp at whatever they can to be able to say, OK, where is where is the excuse that I can use? That's the most believable that I can get away with. Well, I have faith in all people <laughs> <laughs> that they wouldn't do that. <laughs> I am a high school teacher. I mean, but yeah. I think that. But uh, to that same to that same effect, though. I mean, I've had I have had people that just go, not nah, hey, not you know, not today. And but I'm I like, okay, like I don't yeah. want to do this. I don't, you know, like I ain't feeling it. Now I push through. You know, I still do it, but I mean, yeah. I know it's touching. It's she touching. didn't have to do press. She does not have give to her, do press. Give her her fifteen thousand dollars back. I would give it back as a sign of of you know good graces like, and safe face, but I mean I, I think they should have had a conversation with her. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing that we that. right that we don't like. Know. And then, and then maybe, you know, she could have went in like depth like had a conversation like, hey, like if it's in the contract, like, hey, like this is what I'm struggling with. Like, I don't want to do press. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but I, I still know. feel like they shouldn't have fined her. And I think that they should respect her decision to step away. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think that was good. <laughs> I knew that oh, would yeah. be a good one. That would get you fired up. Well, it get me fired up, but... You didn't have to punch me. I did not punch you, Tony. You did not have to punch me. <laughs> so oh not God. that fired up. Okay. So before we get out of here, mm -hmm. I know we had a thousand things on the list that we didn't get to all of them. And that's okay. That means we had great yes. organic conversation. conversation. Yes. But the last thing that I do when I do my episodes oh, is Lord. a segment called <laughs> Today in history june 4th 1964 the beatles <laughs> whom i don't really listen to I, i'm not gonna say i don't really listen to them <laughs> i don't listen to them at all maybe a couple songs come together is pretty good i like that song mm. anyway june 4th 1964 the beatles first and only world tour begins with two 10 song shows at 4,400 seat KB Hale in Copenhagen, Denmark. I wonder how those concerts went. Uh, I bet they were pretty crazy. Yeah. But the number here is going to be 4,400. 4,400. So here's the question for you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what would you feel confident in doing in front of 4,400 people? Oh, dancing. Dancing? Yeah. Like, like what kind dance. of dance? Uh, So I danced with a band in high school. Okay. 
Shout out to Perfection of the Tea Connection. Anyway. All right. Shout out. Um, so dancing. I love to dance. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should dance more at home. Hmm, thank you, Tony. You should. Turn on some music. Self-care. Hit yeah. up the dance. But yeah, dance. Um, I can't think of anything else. No, that's perfect. But yeah, dancing. Uh, for me, what would I do in front of 4,400 people? Anything. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I would do a podcast. <laughs> I think no, I, I could put together else. something like <laughs> anything that requires me to speak. Yeah. Like some kind of. I don't know, presentation or something like that. You want to play your guitar? Heck no. <laughs> Not at all. Maybe give me another year. Just go ahead and do it. Uh, I think by the end of the summer, I could be playing for the church. That's my goal. Oh, okay. I'm trying to be that good. I don't know if I'm overshooting it, but You know, I knows? just keep practicing. You got it. You know, once this baby gets here, you know, I just have to turn the volume down. I can't give up on my, my guitar. No, just... Play when the baby is awake. Don't oh, yeah. play when the baby is asleep. Oh, yeah, I can do me. that. Kid, the baby you have right my permission here. to pop him across the head. <laughs> See, how do we get back to fighting? <laughs> okay, 4,400 people. Anything speaking, but I would say mm, playing basketball. Hmm. Well, duh, you like yeah. playing basketball. <laughs> right, that's what this is about, right? 4,400 people. I got to do something that I know I could do. I would... I would paint something from start to finish in front of 4,400 Really? People. Yeah. Hmm. I need to make my YouTube channel. It just seems like a lot. I'm not there yet, but. I, yeah. I'm I bought a ring to... light, though. You did? For lighting. Yeah. That was a step in the right direction. So you're going to be one of those people that we watch and they're like, hey, guys, welcome to <laughs> my channel. SWC. And we're <laughs> going to be painting this couch today. Now, yeah, yeah, you, know, you got to talk I'm like gonna that. I'm going to be that person. <laughs> so when we're doing all this work and stuff on Teams, then we'll get out of here. I always felt like a YouTuber when I'm talking to my kids because I'm <laughs> on the screen. And so I'm like, hey, what's up, everybody? How we're doing this morning? And blah, blah, blah. So maybe you should start a YouTube channel. So I can you record yourself on YouTube during your podcast? I could. I've seen people do that. I you could. Do that, Tony. But if I'm going to put it on YouTube, it's got to be done right, right? I need the camera angles, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you can do all that. Yeah, I could. And then I would have to, like, edit and stuff. So the end of the year? I'm just put, I'm putting you on the spot. She has <laughs> definitely put me on the spot. I think I will have my podcast starting to upload to YouTube. I got a way to do it. Okay. But y'all be on the lookout for that. Of course, uh, like subscribe follow, follow share download um, mm -hmm. am i missing anything comment watch a million times yes so you can get all the views yes we need that <laughs> we need that and uh share this with your buddies yes because of it's a great podcast you're entertained make sure they're entertained you know people are on their phones all the time anyway yep. so signing off <laughs> Tony's giving me the side, the side eye. <laughs> this is your host, Tony Rambles. And I will see you all in the next one. Say bye, Shami. Bye, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs>